Hey everyone, it's Rami, and welcome to GPU June. This month, many people in the retro computer community will be making videos about old GPUs from like the 90s and early 2000s. Today, I decided to talk about the Radeon X800 series of GPUs. I've got two X800 Pros right here, as well as an X800 XL uh, sitting in my Pentium 4. This card is really nice. I've been using one of these for a while, for the last like two years, and I've really enjoyed my time with it. The X800 is a DirectX 9 card that was released in 2004 and came out in both the AGP8X and PCI Express form factors. Uh, the PCI Express one is a lot rarer, couldn't find that one. Uh, these things were built on the 130 nanometer process and ran at 475 megahertz and came with 256 gigabytes of GDDR3 video memory. On the back, we have a VGA port for your analog video, an S-Video port, as well as a DVI-I port. Uh, this card consumes 200 watts and um, consumes power through a Molex connector here at the top. My Pentium 4 system is actually a shitty Dell Optiplex like office computer, like something you would find in a school or a library, so I don't know if the power supply is sufficient enough, but it's been working for the last two years, perfectly stable, so... Yeah, I'm cool with it. <laughs> I played a lot of games on this thing, though. It's been awesome. Like Half-Life 2 and Doom 3, my favorites, you know, as well as Morrowind Fear, GTA San Andreas. And I also ran DOSBox and source ports like ZDoom and all kinds of stuff. And we will take a look at all these programs today on the Radeon X800 at 1280 by 1024 resolution. Also, look at that art. Don't you miss old school GPU art on the coolers? Shit's nice, man. Even like the boxes of GPUs used to have really nice box art. Good times, man. This is my Windows XP computer. This is a uh, Dell Optiplex GX270. We have a Pentium 4 under here running at 2.8 gigahertz. I really don't like these coolers, but you know, it's whatever. The RAM we have is at one gigabyte, one gigabyte of uh, DDR memory, original DDR. And we have the Sound Blaster Odyssey 2ZS, wonderful sound card with EAX support. And there's the main star of the show, that's the Radeon X800 XL. This is a little slightly different from the X800 Pros I was talking about earlier, but this is the one I have in my system. And this one, I really don't know the difference. Uh, I just know that it looks different, it doesn't have the art on the cooler. But yeah, we're going to take a look at this card and see how it runs in several of the games of its time. Alright, let's go back to 2005. I know the Pentium 4 is not really doing this card any justice, but I'm using it for two reasons here. One is that I simply do not have any other AGP-8X platforms, and the other is that it would be cool to see how much of a performance boost you can get out of one of these shitty old Dells. Now, let's just say that this is like your dad's Dell Optiplex in which you upgraded the RAM and installed this card into. This right here is the catalyst driver for your X800 card. It's got a ton of really cool options. Like, you know, it's all, honestly, it looks pretty modern. First thing I'm gonna do now is run some benchmarks, starting with the classic 3D Mark 2001 SE. Right off the bat, we can see that the Pentium holds, the, holds back this card. I realized that I should have went with a better platform if I had a PCIe model of the X800, I would try it out on my, my Core 2 quad system, but that card is really rare. We got 6,323 3D marks. You can get way more than that with a better CPU, even with like a higher clocked Pentium 4 than what I have, because I've just got a 2.8 gigahertz. Next up, I'm going to run Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, which is one of my favorite benchmarks, as well as, well as being one of my favorite game series. Half-Life 2's FPS tend to dip when there's a lot of smoke, and we have 44 FPS in this benchmark. And one more benchmark, Fear. This game had so many awesome effects and was like super demanding, especially on the card we're running it on. This was like, you, you needed a much more powerful system to really run the game well. So we're running it at maximum details at 1024 by 768 resolution and we got an average of 40 FPS, which is very playable for this game, and it's a sweet ass game I should add, Fear is awesome. I'm going to show how some source ports run on this card now. This is Z-Doom, which is the predecessor to the legendary GZ-Doom. 
I remember using the source port like crazy when I was a kid. It was awesome. This was actually the first time I ever heard the MIDI soundtrack of Doom, because I only ever heard the ad lib before this. I had like the 486 and the Sound Blaster 16 and stuff, you know, for like a long time. As you can see, Z Doom is practically made for systems like this. It is silky smooth, locked, 60 FPS, 1024 by 1280 by 1024. Fucking goodness, love it. Next, we have Descent Rebirth, which, in my opinion, is just as good as of a source port as Z Doom and GZ Doom. Descent 2 is like one of my favorite DOS games. I love the shit out of that game. And Descent Rebirth runs very well on this system, running at a locked 60 FPS and with the option for many different graphical settings. Here's a source port that a lot of you may not have known exists. This is Ken's Labyrinth SDL by Jan Lowenberg. It doesn't run very well on here for some reason, it will skip every now and then, but the ad-lib emulation is great and it sounds awesome. And the, I loved Ken's Labyrinth when I was a kid, I had this game, this was one of my earliest games. And I remember in like middle school just wanting to play it again so badly and not having any computers with ad-lib hardware. And then I found this source port on Ken's website, and I thought it was I really it was great, and it ran good on my system. Much better than it's running here, actually. And now we're gonna try some emulation with DOSBox Enhanced Community Edition. This runs very well, and I remember using DOSBox for my very first time on a system like this. But for some reason the screen tearing on this computer is off the charts. I'm pretty sure it was that way when I was a kid, I just don't remember as well. I have another PCIe based Windows XP system and it doesn't tear nearly this bad on that one. So it might just be the older hardware, I really don't know. I never cared about it back then, but these days screen tearing just makes my eyes freaking bleed, I hate it. Now we're going to check out some games that you likely would have played if you got this card brand new back in the day. First up we have Half-Life 2 and it's very playable at this system, at max settings. At uh, 1280 by 1024 resolution. It'll run at like 60 FPS when you're in a smaller closed area, but when you're out into an open area, uh, it really dips down a little more. And as you can see, looking through the multiple chain link fences at this part is what really brings the frame rate down the most, down to like in the 20s. Although I think that is likely more to do with my CPU, it's probably a CPU bottleneck. This is Silent Hill 3 and I think it is one of the best horror games. The environments in this game are super realistic and the sound and visual design is freaky as all hell. This one runs brilliantly on this X800. I locked 60 FPS almost the entire time. This one I played at night with some headphones and it made me shit my pants. It's really really one of those you, that you need to play at night for the full effect. And yeah, as usual, 1280 by 1024 resolution this one is running at. Another game which was ported from a console is Psychonauts. This will run between 30 and 50 FPS, but in the cutscenes it will run at the full 60 FPS. I've never played this one, but it looks like something I would really love. The game resembles lots of those PS2 games I played when I was younger. One thing I thought was awesome as hell was that you can actually play AM2R on here. This is a remake of the Game Boy Metroid 2 game for PC, and it is one of the best remakes I've ever played. It's like Black Mesa for the Metroid series. And it runs super well on this system at locked 60 FPS. So if you were ever upset about not having like a GPU for a modern game, play some AM2R on the next 800. Seeing this one running so well on here honestly makes me think that this will probably run all kinds of other indie games as well, as long as they don't need any of the instruction sets that the Pentium 4 doesn't support. GTA San Andreas was a game I had for the PS2 back in the day, and I never played it on PC until a lot later. This game looks much better on PC with a higher resolution, and it sounds better with that EAX support. But the frame rate of the game actually feels very similar to the frame rate on the PS2. It's like between 20 FPS and 35 FPS. It's more demanding than you would think it would be, but it just uh, it will not support 1280 by 1024 so I set it to 1280 by 960 which is the closest setting. That's a pro more proper 4x3 aspect ratio. I still have not beaten this game. It's such a long game. It goes on forever. I had a game going on the PS2 but I lost it when I moved houses so who knows. Maybe I'll play it again properly on this X800. I thought Morrowind would run a lot better on this card than it does, but when you're outside in a foggy city, the frame rate chugs at like 20 to 30 FPS. 
It's much better when you're indoors, usually sticking to like 60 FPS the whole time. There's no option for 1280 by 1024 for this game, like San Andreas, so I set it to 1280 by 960. Next up we have Doom 3. I was so excited for this game before it came out, like, because I was a big fan of Doom 2. Doom 2 was my shit, that's still my favorite game. But, while I really did enjoy the living shit out of Doom 3, Half-Life 2 kind of eclipsed it for me for a while. But, I still really enjoy going back to this one right here. And just, you know, going through the environment, picking up and looking at PDAs and stuff, it's great. Doom 3 in this system will have a stutter every now and then. It is especially noticeable, uh, the frame, the, it goes down, the frame rate goes down and it's especially noticeable when you're looking through like warped glass. Like the, the glass in this chamber here in particular. But otherwise, the frame rate is more than playable in my opinion. This one is running at 1024 by 768 at high details and it's like a 40 FPS average. And finally, we will look at Oblivion, which lists the Pentium 4 and Radeon X800 itself as the recommended requirements. And here is what the recommended requirements look like in Oblivion. <laughs> as you can see, the game is kind of playable in the city, but check out when we step outside, like, to see a deal and fight with the smoke around us. Yeah, that's a low of 3 FPS. Recommended requirements, my ass. <laughs> Honestly, this reminds me of the Descent uh, box. The box of Descent says that the uh, minimum requirements is like a 386. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> anyway, that's about uh, what I wanted to show with this card. It was really, really fun. I love this this platform so much. This old ATI Radeon platform based on like the 9700 Pro architecture and all that. Uh, one definitely one of the golden ages of Radeon and that's a taste of what this card can do to an old office PC you may have laying around in storage if you ever decide to put together a quick Windows XP rig in fact if you had an Athlon 64 based system you could get even more utilization out of, out of this card the Pentium 4 was definitely holding this beast back in these tests for sure but I know that a 3D Mark score would be much higher with a more powerful one and I actually really liked the Pentium 4 because of its shittiness, but, you know, it was what I had back in the day, and it just shows how well-optimized games like Half-Life 2 were at the time, and that they were, you know, playable on these shitty-ass old Pentium 4 CPUs. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. I really enjoyed my time with this card, and I look forward to using it more. It's been like two years uh, since I put this system together, and it's been in here ever since. And I, you know, may it last many more years. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed the video. And be sure to check out all the other videos for GPU June. Because there's some great stuff out there. Highly recommended. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.